Here's a fun and not very intuitive problem to try. We have n lines placed on a plane. What is the maximum number q of n of areas that these lines divide our plane into? Before watching the rest of this video, please try this problem for yourself. It's really worth it. Now, here's my solution. First of all, we should look at few first cases. For n equals 0 or 1, the question is pretty simple. If we don't have any lines, the plane is just one big area with nothing else on it, so q of 0 is equal to 1. When we have one line, plane is divided into two pieces, so q of 1 equals 2. Now for two lines, it gets more interesting cause they could be parallel or not parallel. If they are, they form some sort of rail and they divide our plane into exactly three pieces. And if they are not parallel, our plane is divided into exactly four pieces. Hence q of 2 must be equal to 4. Looking at first three values of q of n, you might think, wow, of course, q of n must be equal to 2 to the power of n. No. When we look at the next case, which is four lines, we find out that the answer is not 8 pieces, it's 7. Let's think why this happens, why q of n isn't equal to 2 to the power of n like we intuitively thought. Obviously, q of 0 is equal to 1 because we don't have any lines, just one empty plane. Now, what does happen when we add one line to this plane? This line divides the plane into two separate pieces, hence it doubles the number of areas. That's why q of 1 is equal to 1 times 2. The second line, if it's placed not parallelly to the first one, it crosses it and divides every area into two new pieces. And once again, it doubles the number of areas. Therefore, q of 2 must be equal to 2 times 2. Now let us think about three lines case. Our intuition tells us that q of 3 should be equal to 8, but this would require the third line to cross and essentially double every area we already have, but this cannot happen. Generally, two lines can have 1 or 0 intersection points. These are the only possibilities. Third line, in order to double every piece of plane, would need to cross one of the already existing lines twice, which is impossible. Therefore, q of 3 can't be equal to 8. Our intuition was wrong, but don't lose hope. This logical reasoning we just carried out might be really helpful in solving the entire problem. We have observed that two lines can cross only zero times or once. Therefore, if we have already placed n minus one lines on a plane, then the maximum number of intersection points between the next nth line and the already existing ones is equal to exactly n minus one. This means that the maximum number of areas crossed by the nth line is equal to n. Therefore, we've obtained an upper bound for the q of n q of n minus 1 plus n. Moreover, if the nth line is placed not parallelly to any of the n minus 1 previous lines, and it does not cross them in any of the already existing intersection points, then it creates exactly n new areas. This fact, combined with the upper bound we found few seconds ago, means that we've solved the problem. Recurrently which means that the solution we've obtained is just a recurrent relation for q of n. And it looks exactly like this. Resolving this recurrence isn't hard. By expanding the recurrence over and over again, we obtain that q of n must be equal to q of 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n minus 1 plus n. Q of 0 is equal to 1, as we established at the beginning of this video, and the left sum is an arithmetic progression which sums up to n 
times n plus 1 over 2. Hence, finally, q of n is equal to 1 plus n times n plus 1 over 2. This problem is a classic exercise at the beginning of a discrete math class, which showcases basic mathematical logic and reasoning pretty well. If you want to dive deeper, try applying similar logic in these two problems. Both of them are variants of lines on plane problem. In the first one, instead of lines, we consider infinite Vs, which consist of two rays with common initial point. What is the maximum number V of n of areas that n Vs can divide our plane into? In the second problem, instead of lines, we consider infinite zigzags, which consist of two parallel rays joined by a segment. We ask the same question, what's the maximum number z of n of areas that n zigzags can divide our plane into? If you want to check the solution of the first given problem, check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching.